OK, hi, everybody. Um, so what I'm going to do today is construct the stable model structure on Spectra. Um, and uh, this is going to be a bit more sort of model category technicalities, but starting uh, um, starting from here, we'll, we'll be able to, uh, to um, start constructing some interesting things and, and doing some stuff with, with Spectra. So, um, so first, I want to do a bit of uh, of review. There, there are some things that I think I said kind of informally last time that I want to say a bit more formally. Um, so I've been using these words uh, enrichment and tensor and cotensor, and let me actually say what they mean. Um, so uh, a a category a category C, which is enriched over pointed spaces. is the following data. Um, so I'll say C is enriched over top if for every uh, X and Y in C, there is a there is not just a set of maps, but a pointed space of maps between X and Y. So so this, and I'll just write this as C, X, Y. Um, for every uh, triple of objects in C, there's a composition. So there's a, there's a map like this, which is a map of uh, pointed spaces. Um, and there's an identity map. So uh, so for every X and C, um, there's a map from S0 to maps from X to X, which picks out the identity map on X. Um, and these are supposed to satisfy some axioms, which, which you can write down. So there's uh, composition is supposed to be associative and unital. Okay, um, so a, a few remarks about this. Uh, first of all, this this is a special case of a very general concept. Um, so, given any monoidal category, we can talk about. Uh, maybe I should say, given any symmetric monoidal category, we should we can talk about um, categories which are enriched over that. So, uh, we can do this over any symmetric monoidal category. Uh, second, if you forget the topology on these spaces, so I actually, I said this is a structure that a category can have, but you'll notice that there's actually no reference to the, the sets of maps in, in C at all. Um, and I think the, the way that we should think about it is that there's a forgetful functor uh, from from top star enriched categories to categories. And what this does is it just forgets the topologies and the base point on all the mapping spaces. Um, and so we can say that an enrichment on a, uh, a, a, a top star enrichment um, on a category C is a lift of C along this functor. Um, and finally, uh, one thing that you should notice is that I'm requiring the, uh, the composition to factor through the smash product. Okay, so this is, there are multiple monoidal structures on top star we can choose. Another one is the Cartesian product, for example. And so by factoring it through the smash product, um, one of the things that that is requiring is it's saying that if I take the, the map in here corresponding to the base point of this space and compose it with any other map, I get the map corresponding to the base point of this space. And likewise in the other direction. So one of the ways of, of phrasing this is saying that every um, every one of these mapping spaces has is equipped with a base point which acts as a zero morphism. Um, so every C X Y has a base point 
which is a zero morphism. If you compose it with any other morphism, then you get you get the zero morphism. Okay. Um, right. So that's that's uh, what enrichment means. Um, a few more definitions. So a tensoring of C, which is uh, supposed to be a top star enriched category over top star, is a functor um, like this, uh, which we write um, using a, a tensor product. Uh, sometimes we might put a smash product symbol here too. Um, and this is supposed to uh, to be a an adjoint to the uh, to the mapping the the top star enriched mapping space. So um, maps of pointed spaces from K into C of X Y are supposed to be the same as um, maps in C from uh, sorry follow my own notation, it maps in C from K, K tensor X into Y. Okay, um, both of these are pointed spaces because um, top star is also enriched over itself. Uh, likewise, a cotensoring over top star is a functor like this, which we'll write uh, using this exponential symbol. And this is supposed to satisfy the other adjunction. So um, the space of maps in top star from k into cxy is the same as maps in c from x to the k into y. OK? Um, so one of the things that I was saying last time is that is that all the structure exists in, in the category of spectra as we've defined it. So um, so in spectra, uh, we say that the space of, of, of maps of spectra from x to y. Um, so this is the set as a set. This is just compatible maps, uh, compatible families of maps. from xn to yn. And we topologize this uh, by giving it the subspace topology of the product of the mapping spaces of maps from xn into yn, as n goes from 0 to infinity. OK? So this is the, this is the top star enrichment. Uh, the smash product, um, I've said this a couple times now, but I'll just say it one more time. Uh, if I want to smash a space K with a, with a, with a spectrum X, um, then I just say that the nth space is K smashed with the nth space of X. And the structure maps are um, the suspension of K smash the nth space of X is the same as K smash suspension XN. And using the structure map on X, you have a map from this to K smash XN plus one. Okay. Uh, finally, for the cotensoring, um, Again, we, we define um, the nth space of x to the k to be maps from k into, the, into xn. And for the structure maps, there's a map from x n to the k to um, loops xn plus 1 to the k. This is using the structure maps of x in their, in their loop space form. Uh, and this is, this is the same as the loops of xn plus 1 to the k. All right. So, um, so this is uh, this is a bunch of a bunch of structure that um, that exists on the category of spectra and and satisfies all of these nice adjunctions and everything. Um, so the thing I ended uh, talking about last time is is the idea that this structure should be compatible um, with the with the various model category structures that we place on these things. So there's both. Um, uh, last time we discussed the model structure on top, and we also 
um, we also discuss the level-wise uh, model structure on spectra. Um, so uh, let's see. I don't remember how much of this I how much of this I said last time. But, so let me let me say it again. Um, uh, so. Let's say that M is a model category, which is enriched, tensored, and cotensored. Over top star. Then M is a topological model category. If for all um, cofibrations in top star and cofibrations like this in M, um, this map is a cofibration. So um, this will denote this by this box tensor product. Uh, there is an induced map. Let's see, B tensor X and A tensor Y both map into B tensor Y in a way that's compatible with A tensor X. So there's an induced map from the, the push out uh, to B tensor Y. Okay, so the condition is that this is a cofibration uh, in, in M, which is a cyclic if either I or J is. Okay. Now, when I first learned about this, this condition, um, I, I found it uh, very difficult to wrap my head around. And I wanna give you a little bit of, of motivation for, for why you could, um, why why you would come up with this with this sort of definition? Uh, so one thing that I want to say is that um, I mean so so first of all, uh, besides talking about topological model categories, model categories where the model structure is compatible with the uh, enrichment tensoring and cotensoring over over top star, we could also talk about model categories um, which are enriched as model categories over uh, simplicial sets or unpointed spaces or or anything like that. Um, so there's a notion of monoidal model category and, and you can talk about other model categories being enriched over monoidal model categories. Um, the, the next thing I wanna say is that this axiom is stated in terms of the tensoring, but because um, all three of these structures, the being enriched, tensored and cotensored are related to each other by adjunctions, um, you can come up with equivalent uh, equivalent versions of it that are stated in terms of one of these other structures. Okay, so as an exercise, um, you might want to check that that uh, that this is equivalent to the following. So given uh, given a cofibration i from a to b in top star a fibration P from X to Y in M, then the induced map from maps from B to X, which is an object in M using the cotensoring to the pullback of maps from B to Y times maps from A to Y uh, into this pullback uh, is a fibration which is acyclic if I or P is, 
Okay, so this we will write as hom box from i into p. Okay, there's there's yet another equivalent version. It's also equivalent to. Given a co-fibration. Oh, I shouldn't use k because I've been using k for spaces. Uh, given a co-fibration from x to y in M and a fibration from X prime to Y prime in M. Then this, this map of pointed spaces Uh, nope. Okay, this map of pointed spaces is a vibration which is acyclic if I or P is. Okay, so there are three equivalent versions of this of this definition, each using um, one of these one of these compatible structures on the category. Um, okay, uh, some here's here's a bit of other motivation. Um, so, other motivation. Uh, one of the simplest things that we could say is that the the, um, the the model structure on M should should just be compatible with the enrichment in some way. Uh, A slightly deeper uh, source of motivation is that, uh, you can actually define um, spaces of maps between objects in any model category. Okay, uh, so any model category M has a space of maps between objects, uh, and this is um, this is a result. This is called the Dwyer Kahn or hammock localization. Um, this is only well-defined up to homotopy, up to, up to weak homotopy equivalents. Uh, but um, one of the things that's implied by these conditions is that these, um, is that the space of maps that comes out of the model category structure is equivalent to um, the one that comes from the enrichment. Okay, so these conditions uh, imply that the Dwyer Kahn localization spaces are equivalent to the mapping spaces coming from the enrichment. From the enrichment. Um, in particular, In particular, it implies that the homotopy category of M is enriched over the homotopy category of pointed spaces. Okay. Um, finally, uh, let's let's look at at this version of, of the axiom, the, the one coming from the enrichment. Um, so this is this is saying something about um, about uh, mapping spaces, um, and and one of the ways that you can interpret it is that it's talking about the space of lifts in a square that that looks like this. Okay, so um, yeah, so. 
So um, looking at this map again, let me copy them. Ah, oh, crap. Let me copy the map. So, um, so this term is talking about the space of maps like this. Um, this term, so this is maps from x to x prime that are compatible with maps from y to y prime when you compose to get a map from x to y prime. So that's exactly the space of squares, um, the, the space of horizontal maps that, that fill in the square between your, the two maps that you fixed. Okay, so we're saying that this map is a fibration. And if one of these two things is trivial, then it's, a, it's an, or sorry, if, uh, if either I or P is acyclic, then it's an, an acyclic fibration. So in other words, we know that in any model category, the lifts exist in this diagram. Um, and this form of the axiom, one of the things that it says is that, uh, let me start that sentence again. We know in any model category that if one of these maps is acyclic, then lifts exist in the, in the diagram. Um, and what the axiom says is that the, the space of lifts uh, in the diagram um, over any fixed like once you fix these two horizontal maps, then the space of lifts is contractible, okay? So because this is a trivial fibration, the, uh, an acyclic vibration, the fiber over any point is, is, um, is contractible, weakly contractible, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so, um, so that's, all, uh, that's all by way of motivation. Um, and the, uh, maybe I'll say one other thing about this, which is that um, if you, if you think about, uh, about doing this exercise, um, you'll see one of the things that'll be useful is that there are some adjunctions you can use to relate these maps. Um, so if I have a, uh, rather than write down something formal, maybe I'll just, I'll just draw you a picture of how this looks. So if I have a, a map from one of these push-out products. Into some other map. So if I have a commutative square where the left-hand side is, is one of these push-out products and the right-hand side is some other map, um, then uh, there's an adjunction that says that such a square is equivalent to a map from a square whose left-hand side is, is my map from x to y. And I was calling this j, wasn't I? And whose right-hand side is um, is the pullback power map. Okay, so uh, Okay, so inside the arrow category, there's an adjunction um, between the, uh, the push-out product and the pullback power. Okay, um, so, uh, so the, the main example of this is that, um, is that the level-wise category, the level-wise model category of spectra is a topological model category. Uh, using all the structure that we've defined earlier. So here's the proof. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me say one other thing about this adjunction, um, which I 
because I'm, I'm just about to use it in this proof. Uh, so like I said, a square like this corresponds to a square like this. But also, if I, if I have a lift in this square, the construction of such a lift is equivalent to constructing a lift in this square. Um, again, this is, an, this is an exercise in, in category theory um, for you all to think about later. OK, um, so, so what I want to show is, let's say that we have some uh, cofibration. Um, in top star and a fibration of spectra. And I'm, I'm going to prove the, the pullback power version of the map. Um, so I have, uh, I have an induced map like this, which I want to show is a fibration. Um, to show that it's a fibration, I need to show that it has the right lifting property with respect to all the generating acyclic cofibrations. And the generating acyclic cofibrations are you take the inclusion of, um, of a dn minus one into a dn, and you take the, uh, the shifted suspension spectra, um, which put both these spaces as the deep space of the spectrum, and then there's suspensions as the later spaces in the spectrum. So we want to find a lift in the map like this. Now, using the adjunction, uh, this is the same as um, as finding a lift in a diagram that looks like this. So the left-hand side is going to be a push-out product in pointed spaces. Okay, so there, the claim is that a lift exists here. Um, since, uh, since the map from X to Y is a fibration in the level-wise model structure, that means it's a level-wise fibration. So this map from XD to YD is a fibration. Um, and, and now you can just check. Uh, so A to B is a, um, is a co-fibration in, in topological spaces, uh, in, in top star, I mean. So it's a, it's a retract of a of a relative cell complex, um, and uh, and that implies that uh, this map is an acyclic cofibration. Okay, so this this is an acyclic cofibration in top star. Okay. Um, likewise, if uh, if this map was was or sorry, if um, if x to y was an acyclic fibration in spectra, that would mean that each x d to y d was an acyclic fibration of spaces, um, and then you could make the same argument with um, with this map from d n minus one to d n replaced by uh, one of the generating cofibrations of top star, a map from s n minus one to s n. Okay, so um, this is not all the details in this, but but I think I'm just going to leave it here. This is the main idea. OK, um, any questions about any of this so far? All right. Um, so now let's start talking about the stable model structure. So, um, so the idea behind the stable model structure Is that um, the the level wise model structure has it has too many homotopy types in it? Um, a homotopy type in the level wise model structure is basically a sequence of homotopy types of spaces. Uh, so what we need to do to get fewer homotopy types is we need to add more weak equivalences and and do so in such a way that um, that uh, for example um, makes loops and suspension inverses to each other. Um, so um, so the easiest way to do that is to say we still want a cofibrantly generated model structure, um, so we can add more acyclic cofibrations. So we're going to add some additional uh, acyclic cofibrations to uh, the generators 
of the level-wise model structure. So the resulting, the resulting model structure will have the same uh, co-fibrations as before, because we haven't changed the generating co-fibrations. It'll have more weak equivalences. And actually, we're, we're going to set this up so that the weak equivalences are um, a map which induces an isomorphism on, uh, on homotopy groups. OK, so for now, I'll just call these pi star isomorphisms. Um, and it'll have fewer fibrations. Uh, since fibrations are just maps that satisfy the right lifting property with respect to the acyclic cofibrations. Um, adding more acyclic cofibrations will give you fewer fibrations. Okay. Um, for example, uh, any spectrum is fibrant in the level-wise model structure. And this is no longer going to be true um, in the stable model structure. Instead, the fibrant spectra will be um, will be the omega spectra. So that's actually an interesting condition on a spectrum. OK, um, so the, uh, the main sort of map that was problematic for us in the, um, the level-wise model structure were maps that looked like this. So there's a map from Fn plus 1 S1 to Fn S0 uh, called lambda n which is adjoint to Fn plus one is left adjoint to evaluate at the n plus one space. Um, and the n plus one space of this is uh, S1. So on, on levels, um, here's what the levels of these spectra look like. Fn plus one S1 has uh, point in every level up to the n plus one, and then it has S1, and then the suspension of S1, and so on and so on. And Fn S0 has a point in every level up to the nth, um, and then in the nth it has an S0. Okay, and so we just define the map to be the only map that it can be up to here, and then the identity map from then on. OK, so since this map um, starts becoming the identity at a certain stage, it is a pi star isomorphism. Uh, so lambda n is a pi star isomorphism, um, but it has no homotopy inverse. Um, any homotopy inverse would have to do something to s. It would have to send s0 to to a point, and then all the suspensions would also have to have contractible, uh, would also have to be null homotopic in, in wherever they landed up here. Um, so this is kind of the prime example of a, a map that's uh, that's problematic from the point of view of the, the uh, level-wise model structure. Um, the other thing uh, that we should mention is that lambda n is not a cofibration. So um, uh, the, the easiest way to see this is to remember that the cofibrations in the level-wise model structure, um, you essentially have to add cells in such a way that whenever you add a cell to one stage, you add a suspension to all the other stages. And here we've only really changed one stage of, of the spectrum. Um, so we've added a zero cell here, but we haven't added its suspensions to, to the rest of the stages. Okay. So um, this, since lambda n is not a cofibration, but we want the uh, stable cofibrations to be the same as the level-wise cofibrations, um, this, this is not exactly a thing that we can add as a, a new acyclic cofibration. Um, but what we can do is we can, we can approximate it by a cofibration. Uh, and, and we can do that through using a mapping cylinder construction. Sorry, quick question. Yes. Why? Uh... What was preventing this from having a homotopy inverse again? Right. Yeah. So let me let me say it more slowly. Um, if there if there is a homotopy inverse, so that has to do something to each of these spaces, right? Uh, so um, the only thing it can do to S is zero, is is it has to send it to the point. Um, 
So we have we have a map like this. And now um, the next map in the diagram has to be it has to be compatible with this. So in other words, there's there's a structure map in one of these spectra that is that's this, and a structure map in the other one that's um, suspension of the point to S1. And this diagram has to commute, right? But but now um, this map S0 to point is contractible, or null homotopic, I mean. Um, so that means that uh, this composition is null homotopic. And now this is an equivalent, so the map from S1 to S1 also has to be null homotopic. Um, and you can you can do this for every space in the diagram, and uh, and that shows you that that any map um, which is a any map from this this spectrum to this spectrum um, has to be null homotopic on each level. So it can't be a it can't be a homotopy inverse um, to uh, to lambda n. Gotcha. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, right. So let's so let's replace lambda n by a cofibration. Um, so using using this uh, tensoring over spaces, we can we can construct mapping cylinders in a pretty simple way. Um, so the mapping cylinder of lambda n is just the, well, let's say that this map is the inclusion uh, into the one endpoint of the interval. Um, and then the push out will be the cylinder of lambda n. Okay. Um, there's also an inclusion from, uh, from fn plus one s one into the zero endpoint of the interval. And this composition uh, is a cofibration. Okay. Um, and actually, there's one other thing we can do with this interval, which we, is we can crush it down to a point. Um, and that gives us a retraction of this vertical map. So there's, there's also a, a map like this. Um, and what this, um, what this diagram does is, let me see, I should like, Use some colors here. Uh, this map and this map, which is an acyclic fibration, um, this is a this is a factorization of lambda n into a cofibration followed by an acyclic fibration. Okay, so all the diagram does is 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 give an explicit such factorization. Okay, um, so finally. Uh, we can say we can say what the model structure is. So there is a model structure, a cofibrantly generated model structure on spectra. With um, the weak equivalences being the pi star isomorphisms, the generating cofibrations being the same as the level-wise generating cofibrations. So these are the maps um, that look like this. And the generating acyclic cofibrations are the level-wise generating acyclic cofibrations um, together with maps of the following form. Uh, so KD is this, this map, uh, box tensor product, this. OK. Um, and I think that what the box tensor product is doing is um, is this this Kn was defined by like using the fact that S1 is the suspension of S0. Um, and if you replace the numbers one and zero by n and n minus one, then then 
um, then what you get is this box tensor product. Okay. Um, so I'm not I'm not going to to uh, prove this in a lot of detail, but I'll but I'll sketch out the main arguments. Um, the uh, the thing that I actually want to focus on is um, is what are the vibrations in this model structure. So, um, so x to y, f from x to y is a stable vibration. In other words, it has the right lifting property with respect to j. If and only if f is a level-wise vibration, And uh, for all D, the, uh, this map is a weak equivalence of spaces. Um, in particular, let's take the case where Y is a point. So X is fibrant in the stable model structure. If and only if. So um, the, the map from X to a point is always a level-wise vibration. So this is the only, um, the, is the only uh, non-trivial condition. And this turns into the condition that the map from XD to loops XD plus one is a weak equivalence. In other words, X is an omega spectrum. Um, oh, I got a question in the chat. Can I write KN out more explicitly? Um, it might help me interpret J. Sure. So uh, let's see. So we, we can do this. We can do this push out um, at the uh, at the level of the spaces in the spectra. Um, let me actually. I need, I need more space to do this. Okay. Uh, So here's my diagram again. Um, right. So so at the level of spaces, uh, let's see. Lambda n is n is uh, is the identity map on every space except for the nth space. Okay. So at the at the nth space, we have point to s is zero to uh, point smashed with um, the interval with a disjoint base point, which is still just a point. And so the push out is, uh, is S0. Um, and so this map is, is just the inclusion of the base point into S0. Uh, if I think about the n plus kth space, um, so this is SK mapping by the identity map into SK. Um, this is uh, SK smashed with this. Um, this is the same as uh, SK times an interval um, mod base point times the interval. OK, so this is a pointed version of the ordinary cylinder construction. Um, and and this is the identity map, and so the push out is this is the same object. Um, and so now what we're doing is we're including we're including k into the into the zero endpoint of this. Okay, so it looks like what we get is a uh, is a map that looks like this. Um, 
it's a bunch of maps like this up to the nth stage. In the nth stage, we have a map from the point to S0. Um, and starting in the n plus 1 stage, we have uh, an inclusion of the end of a cylinder. Okay, so I, I think that one of the ways that we can think about this is, um, like I said, if you want a cofibration, whenever you attach a cell, you have to attach its suspensions to the further stages in the spectrum. Um, and I, I think that's what we're doing here. Um, I'm, not, I'm not quite seeing that, but that, that must be what's going on. You can probably write out the quizshop product explicitly too now. Right, although I have to think about that. Um, but this is this is good to think about, I think. So we want to take so this is Kn. So we want to do Kn push out product uh, Sn minus one plus into Dn plus. Um, so. I hope you all will, will forgive me for this. I, I didn't actually think about this before, um, beforehand, so it, it takes a second to think about. But uh, so this is A smashed with Sn minus one. Uh, nope. Okay, um, right, so, so again, smashing with a space that has a disjoint base point is the same as multiplying by this space and then quotienting out by base point times this space. Uh, so in particular, um, is that the best way to think about it? So if I do like, uh, okay, sorry. Let's 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 uh, let's start out with um, with the nth stage. So, um, so a point smashed with anything is is a point. Um, so this is point. This is point, this is S0 smash Sn minus one plus, which is Sn minus one plus. So that the nth stage is uh, Sn minus one plus, including into Dn plus. Um, at the higher stages, n plus kth stage, we have Something that looks like this. Okay. Um, I'm sure there's a way to simplify this, but I'm not. I'm not seeing it right now. Uh, so, I don't know. If someone if someone figures it out, uh, leave it in the chat or the or the Discord. Um, it somehow must be the the. I mean, so at the nth stage, you're you're adding this nth cell, and at the higher stages, you must be adding the suspension of that nth cell somehow. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so back to what I was saying. Um, 
we have this uh, so so we have this this characterization of the fiber and objects. Um, uh, they are they are the omega spectra, the the spectra with the property that um, each space in the spectrum is weakly equivalent to the loop space of the next one. Uh, do I want to prove this? So I, I'm running a bit a bit low on time. So I I don't know if I'm going to go through all of these proofs. Um, so. Uh, Let me think. Right. So I think I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip the proofs both of this and the and the model structure and and talk about some applications. Um, and these proofs are are all in uh, in Barnes and Roy's time. Um, so uh, so here's here are some applications of the existence of the model structure. So. Um, so one is that there are there are some nice maps of spectra that are that are isomorphisms on homotopy groups. So uh, so the first thing is that x to loop suspension x is a is an isomorphism on homotopy groups. Um, the reason that this is true is that we compute pi star x via this colimit. So um, if I want to compute pi star x. Uh, let me say I want to compute pi kx, then this is the colimit of pi k plus n of xn. Um, but the maps in the diagram, I'm supposed to go from pi k plus n xn to pi k plus n plus 1 xn plus 1. Um, and this is the same as, uh, or sorry, so, so what I do is I, I use the suspension map on, on homotopy groups. That there's a natural map from this to suspension to the, the k plus n plus one homotopy group of, of suspension xn. Um, and then the structure map of x gives me a map like this. And this we can identify with pi k plus n of loops sigma, loops suspension xn. Okay, so we have this colimit diagram um, with the property that all of the maps appearing in the colimit diagram uh, factor through um, a homotopy group in loop suspension X. Um, so in other words, uh, the, the, the system of groups that looks like this indexed by N is cofinal in this. Okay, so that means that they have to have the same colimit. Um, so this shows that this map is an, an equivalence in the stable model structure. These two objects uh, represent the same stable homotopy type. Um, by similar arguments involving cofinality, you can also prove that um, that suspension just shifts homotopy groups down. And likewise for, for loop space, okay? This fact about loop space is, this is also true in spaces, um, but the fact about suspension is not, okay? So um, as a consequence, suspension and loops preserve uh, the weak equivalences in the stable model structure. They preserve the pi star isomorphisms. Um, as a consequence of that, uh, well, it's easy to check that suspension preserves uh, cofibrations. And so we end up getting a, uh, a quillin adjunction from spectra to itself. Um, and in fact, this is equivalent equivalence. So if this is a equivalent equivalence, in other words, um, 
suspension and loops are inverse equivalences on the stable homotopy category. Okay. Um, by the way, now that we've gotten this far, we don't really need to think much about the level-wise model structure anymore. So um, when I say spectra, I mean spectra with the stable model structure. Okay. Um, so, so this is one of the desirable properties that we wanted uh, at the very beginning of this of this um, of this seminar uh, that we wanted spectra to have. Um, we wanted to be able to desuspend things and and, and deloop things, and for loops and suspension to be inverse to each other. Um, another property. So there is this suspension spectrum functor. This is the same as the functor that we've been denoting f zero. And uh, again, it's not too hard to check that this preserves co-fibrations. Um, and it preserves weak equivalences. In fact, it does something, it does something much stronger. Um, it sends weak equivalences to level-wise weak equivalences. Um, which are also stable weak, stable weak equivalences. Which are also stable weak equivalences. So, um, so as a result, this is the left adjoint in equivalent adjunction. Uh, so we have a equivalent adjunction between pointed spaces and spectra. And we know what the right adjoint to this is. It's evaluation at the zeroth space in the spectrum. Okay. Um, now, since in the stable model structure, uh, not every spectrum is is fibrant. Um, this this right adjoint is not a homotopy invariant thing. Um, the homotopy invariant concept is the right derived functor of this. In other words, apply this right adjoint to a fibrant replacement. Um, so. Uh, so the homotopy invariant concept here is the right derived functor of evaluate at the zeroth space applied to X. This is defined as evaluate at the zeroth space of a fibrant replacement of X. Okay. Now, as we've seen, any fibrant spectrum um, is a, is an omega spectrum. So, uh, so what this means is find an omega spectrum that's that's equivalent to X and take its zeroth space. Um, and so, typically, we write this as a loops infinity of X. Uh, and I don't know if I have time to do it, but if um, maybe I'll do it next time. If you think through the construction of the fibrant replacement, you see why this is why this is called this. So this always ends up being an infinite loop space. Um, and it's part of sort of an equivalence between uh, infinite loop spaces and, um, and spectra satisfying a condition on their homotopy groups. Infinite loop space. OK. So already, just from constructing this model structure, we've gotten a few, um, a few of the nice characteristics that we wanted. Uh, we, we have that suspension and loop space are homotopy inverses to each other. Um, and we have this adjunction, this um, suspension spectrum infinite loop space adjunction between uh, spaces and spectra. OK. Um, so, so next time, I'll tell you more about loops infinity. And I will uh, probably also talk about something like uh, cofiber sequences and fiber sequences, um, which, are, which are a really useful tool. OK. Let's stop the recording.